is enough to cover the door. <laughs> I will pause here and get back to Clough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. All right, so Kofi has started us off, um, tickling us. And um, like you said, the theme for today is tickling the SMPism. So I wish to read from, I speak of Ghana from the chapter Gano Manosyncratic in St. Peter's. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, first and foremost, I think basically that Ghanaians are a great bunch of people. We have our own expressions that are understood only by us. They come in various ways. We like to happy ourselves. Is that not true for all Ghanaians, you may ask? My response, who told you? As a matter of fact, when you are contributing to a debate, you may get a response from a panelist to suggest that your argument does not wash because your presentation of the issue is neither here nor there. Should in case you try to correct him, he will stand his ground that his point is the gospel truth <laughs> actually the true fact. Should you try to interrupt, he will insist that you let him land. Otherwise, he will shout, please give me a break. In Sikaman, when you seek clarification on an issue from an older Ghana man, you don't ask, what do you mean? It is considered a new sort. You can say, I beg your pardon. Otherwise, you could be branded a bloody fool. <laughs> The rainy season in Ghana brings with it various excuses to skip work, especially for those in the civil service. You will find the guy pulling his cloth around himself the more as the rain hits his roof. The standard expression is the weather brings itself. <laughs> as for this weather, hmm. In other words, the probability of this guy showing up at work on such a rainy day is zero. Frankly speaking, he's not going to work. When a trotro approaches where a passenger wants to alight, you hear, bah, stop. I will drop here. The driver's mate should by now be ready with the passenger's change. If you don't give the mate enough notice before your stop, then be prepared to experience a jolt as the driver applies a punchy break. When I attend events and the MC starts by saying without, without much ado, actually some say without much I do, suggesting that he will be brief, I laugh. Usually the opposite happens. When a speaker opens with, I won't take much of your time, watch out. In some churches, when the pastor says in conclusion, be prepared for one more hour, of the sermon, particularly if it's in the spirit. You will never be the same again. All too soon, which does not come soon enough, mm -hmm. the pastor will touch on his last but not the least point, and you may hear a sigh of relief. Ingenuity is a strong characteristic of a Ghana man. Take away used to be available only for check check or fried rice. These days, and yesterday I actually experienced this, you can do takeaway from chow bars with fufu and live soup. <laughs> when you leave the food joint, don't be surprised to hear the proprietor say, please return back soon. <laughs> A sign of his good customer service. However, if you change your mind about patronizing this eatery, perhaps due to insanitary conditions, you could give an excuse that you are not totally going away, just going to come. Express your opinion about the insanitary conditions, and you may hear someone who disagrees with you say, but you cry, why? Ask a Ghana man how he's doing. We are managed, you know. It is not easy, oh. By his grace, oh. Home hard. Raining, but the ground is still hard. But how for do? Small, small. Small time. 
It go be. Mm-hmm. God day. Mm-hmm. We day. As my friend Yahudo say, we say. We are noted for our courtesy, especially in addressing older folks. The combinations are endless and sometimes needless. Bra old man, sister girl, auntie sister, or uncle dada. Some people just love to eat. Then a man will call such a person a Fudian. When a Fudian is your body buddy and visits you at meal time, be careful about the invitation to the meal. You are invited or you have met me. You could take over your meal and also ask silly questions like, was the Akantia shot or killed in the trap? <laughs> A good answer, particularly if you are not amused, could be lightning killer. <laughs> you will talk to, shine your eyes about such friends. As kids, we knew such friends, so when they found us eating, we would jokingly say, all, fr- all hands are invited except those who will eat. <laughs> but some foodians are not shy, cry. they will still join in. Thank you. So, um, I, I, I ended on the note of, uh, of the foodian, and um, most of you would know that Kofi is the, is the only African today who has won the CNN Multi-Choice, CNN Multi-Choice Journalist, African Journalist of the Year for Arts and Culture, back to back. So he won it. So he won it in uh, 2010 and 2011. And one of the, actually the first um, article he won it with is called The Serious Business of Soup in Ghana. So having ended with the food here, and it is just appropriate that we taste some soup. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming uh, once again. I begin by reading the prologue to this article. It's entitled, The Serious Business of Soup in Battle. I read, soup is not a child's game. It must not be served in a cup, <laughs> nor without meat or fish. Soup must have pepper. It must never, never have sugar. <laughs> no, dear compatriots, the above prologue is not at all directed at you. The target is all those, especially in Western society, whose concept of soup is far from that of the Ghanaian. See, these people have ideas about soup which are dangerously funny. (laughs) How, for instance, can one add sugar or alcohol to soup? (laughs) (laughs) The above verse is also inspired by an encounter I had with Maria a few years ago. Maria is a lively, bouncing French woman from Tenerife Island. Like me, she was also employed in the kitchen at Latima, One day, Maria was drinking this yellowish stuff in a cup. When I asked her what it was, she said soup. Then she asked if I would like some. (laughs) (laughs) Soup in a cup? Never. When will people get serious? (laughs) This episode happened in Europe and must not bother us. However, the way we are adopting Western lifestyles, it would only be a matter of time before some of us would start showing similar disrespect to soup. It is no secret that many among us feel inadequate when we see others sit at a table with half a dozen different dishes. Compared to ours, theirs appear grand. What with starter stuff, main dish, sauce, vegetables, lamb, and the wings. But do not despair, countrymen and women. With us, it is all in the soup. In Ghana, when the dining table is laid, it is typically a tale of four items. First is the main dish, usually 
Banco, Acclaim, Tuzafi, etc. Next is the soup bowl. Then there are two sets of water. One for washing hands, the other to be drunk. End of story. In the event of an earthquake, the one item most likely to be saved is the soup bowl. <laughs> this is a Ghanaian instinct. Simple. In the average Ghanaian home, the phrase, what for dinner, is functionally out of place. The question is, what soup is doing the backing? <laughs> for us, the chief meal of the day is supper, with the main dish usually constant. Soup, then, is what makes the difference, bringing color to our dining table. The impressive thing about, now I'm going to types of soup, and I'm taking light soup. The impressive thing about light soup is that it is so versatile. Indeed, local experts believe that all soups come from light soup. Yeah. <laughs> the reverse of this logic is that you can have your light soup and easily convert it to palm nut soup That's right. or grandma <laughs> soup. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you have some experts in the house. <laughs> The reverse of this logic is that you can have your light soup and easily convert it to palm nut soup or granite soup or okra soup. Mm -hmm. Such an overhaul doesn't go against the dynamics of this soup, mm -hmm. nor does it contravene the Ghanaian national constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have light soup and you want it converted to granite soup? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Mix it. Just introduce granite paste. Ah, yes, <laughs> Light soup enthusiasts believe that at the onset of fever, what one needs is not really a doctor. <laughs> what does a trick is hot, spicy, garden extreme, dried fish enriched light soup. Those who doubt the medicinal side of light soup should wait until they have been beaten wet and sore by the rain. Hot light soup restores sanity in seconds. <laughs> In biblical retrospect, if Jesus Christ <laughs> had raised that dead 12-year-old child in Ghana, uh -huh. the scripture in Mark 5.43 would have read, And Koku Yesu said unto the parents, Behold, offer thy little girl a bowl of light soup. <laughs> Now we are in motion, and Nana will take on the reins and then take us to a trotro journey. Uh, but before he comes on, I would like to tell the house that this is our format. It's relaxed. Um, we would have two breaks, and during those two breaks, you feel free to ask questions or join us, contribute in whichever way you want. And then uh, we also have. Some of the books here, you could feel free to leave with some. We'll go to grab them beautifully for you. So, without much I do, just a Thank you, Kofi. Um, so, I read from my, my third book, Tales from Different Tales. And um, I hear um, if a girl man is pronouncing this, they will say, towels from different tiles. <laughs> so I read from face to face, Trotro Palava. The engineer who designed the bus would have surely been surprised to find that one of his handiworks was still on the road, so many years after the assembly plant had been decommissioned. There was the likelihood that he might not even recognize it as one of those that left his factory. A new guy at Kukumpe had left his mark on the old Maurice bus. The Trotsky, as all the locals called their regular passenger vehicles, carried registration number ABC 4037. 
Lagos Town, New Town, Circle. Lagos Town, New Town, Circle, ready going. Akwesi shouted, calling out in all directions his brownish towel on his shoulder, already soaked with sweat in the 30 degree centigrade sun. <laughs> Intermittently, he would wring it to squeeze out the sweat. Yes, ready going. Only two more to go. Are you going? Akwesi crossed the street to help a lady who ended up going to another vehicle. Oh. She was headed for Mamoji, brother. Even though there were six people seated in the trotro, only one of them was a real passenger. Oh. The rest were mates and drivers in the Abedi station. Sitting in the bus was a ploy to encourage commuters to join the bus thinking it was almost full. <laughs> a baby station was situated in the pig farm area, the area's name dating back to the days when a nearby joint was the best place in Accra to get dumedo, fried and spiced pork. It was a pork factory. Lines of frying pork could be found at the joint, and one could get the dumedo hot, spiced, with accompaniment of ring onions and powdered pepper. The station was managed by the GPRTU, an affiliate of the TUC. Some called the union Jepretu of Tuk. The executives were usually retired old drivers. Info Gayon was the station master. Yes, Circle, <coughs> Newtown, Kokomlemle, Lagos Town, air-conditioned bus. <laughs> Away bus, ready, going. There were 12 people now, and the other mates and drivers gave each other cues to begin getting off strategically as the bus filled up. The vehicle was actually a lorry which had been converted into a passenger bus. The capacity was written as part of the particulars of the bus on the driver's door, 19 which included the driver. In the lingua of the station, the sitting arrangements were distributed system back to front. The driver's seat was not included in the tally. The driver was separated from the main compartment behind him by a wire mesh. The com this compartment contained two wooden benches arranged parallel to each other so that when the passenger sat, they faced each other. Even though the driver's mate admitted 16 passengers to occupy the benches, he would insist on sitting as well. Masa Kojo, Masa, the car is almost full. We can go now. The driver walked slowly to the bus, a toothpick busy in his mouth. He was using it like a ceiling brush to remove scattered cobwebs of meat stuck in his teeth. He had just completed a meet of Fufu and Akrantia, a speciality of Darby Ama, who had been operating a chop bar in the station for decades. Mate, we are serving on each bench already. Is it not full? Are you going to sit yourself? No, we are not full. It is one man, one seat. Hey. Eight on each bench. <laughs> ah, mate, Yipa, what one man, one seat? Do you understand what that means? The other passengers joined in the laughter. Soon, a new passenger joined the, ben the bench behind the driver. Mate, the latest passenger, a man dressed in factory overalls and quiet. There's no more space on this bench. How can I fit? Akwesi ignored him and called out for one more passenger. <laughs> a lady who was clearly in the hurry came running and was grateful when Akwesi asked her to sit on the little space he indicated on the bench. With a touching of wires, the driver got the engine running. <laughs> At the queue of away bus from Akwesi, Master Kojo took off and then applied his brakes suddenly, as if on cue. The dilemma of inadequate space on the benches were solved immediately. <laughs> as each passenger was thrown in the direction of the driver and the parking was complete. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.